First off, if your macaroni and cheese ain't bubbling like this, when you get it out the oven, you need to start over. Hey guys, it's your girl Malika, aka Miss Magic, back with another video. I am going to teach you guys how to make the best southern baked macaroni and cheese this side of the border. But first, if you are new here, welcome to my channel. Hit that subscribe button for me. Give me a big thumbs up. And go ahead and hit the notification bell so you can be alerted when I do post another video. All right, guys. Let's get right on into this video. Yeah, and I know everybody want that corner piece of that mac and cheese. But that corner right there is mine. First, we're going to get into shredding these cheeses. I have a block of sharp cheddar. I have a block of mild cheddar. I have a block of Monterey Jack, and then I've got some Pepper Jack Gouda cheese that is going to give my macaroni and cheese that extra kick. So we're gonna get straight into getting into this. I have some whipping cream that I'm gonna use and sour cream as well. All right, guys, let's get right on into shredding our cheese. And while we're shredding our cheese, we'll talk about um, the different cheeses. Macaroni and cheese. It's called macaroni and cheese. It doesn't say exactly what cheese to use. You can be selective. It depends on what type of cheese you want. You can use Kobe Jack. You can use Monterey Jack. Sharp cheddar. Well, I, I definitely recommend you definitely have to have some sharp cheddar in your macaroni and cheese. And mild cheddar as well. But other than that, you can kind of experiment. But when making a pan of uh, macaroni and cheese, you at least want four cups of cheese depending on what you want some people still use Velveeta I personally do not um I just I just don't there's nothing wrong with using Velveeta people use Velveeta all the time so right now I'm shredding up my uh Gouda and like I said I found this and used it in my macaroni and cheese one time and people told me whatever you put in there you're best to keep putting it in there and I'm telling you it was this this pepper jack Gouda or you can use regular Gouda so I only had, um, I had made a macaroni and cheese a couple of weeks before. I only had like a half of it left. So I went on and used that for that. Now I'm going to go ahead and shred up the rest of my other cheeses. And guys, I'm loving my little hand shredded shredder I got from Walmart. But I got to find a way to keep it stationed to the actual counter because it moves all over the place. But it shreds like a dream. All right, guys. So once you get all your cheeses shredded up. We're gonna get a big bowl and then we're gonna go ahead and mix all the cheeses together. Make sure you get all that cheese that you spent all your little time shredding and put it in the bowl together. I got some little chunks that I'm taking out that I'm gonna actually melt separately. Please, please, please forgive my ashy hands. It was a heavy cook day, so I had to wash my hands about 10 to 15 times today. And I, I they ashy, I, I'm an ashy person, I get ashy, forgive me. All right, we're gonna get right on into making our roux. I'm gonna use a half a cup of butter. And then also, once I place the half a cup of butter on the fire, medium low, I'm going to let that melt all the way down. And then I'm going to add a half a cup of flour and I'm going to stir and make sure the flour is all the way stirred in and cooked down. It is very important that you wanna get it to a golden brown consistency because we want to Thicken it up. This is for our macaroni to have a nice thick consistency, but we do not want our macaroni and cheese to taste like flour. So you must cook down the flour until it is golden brown. Once it's golden brown, we're gonna add 12 ounces of heavy whipping cream. And after I add the heavy whipping cream, I'm gonna add 12 ounces of half and half. Now you wanna add both of these in nice and slow stirring as you go and you want your heat on medium low to medium while you're stirring and you like to say when you know when you do a roux you are to constantly stir that will keep the consistency nice and even that's the half and half go ahead and stir in 12 ounces of half and half now it is perfectly okay to use milk your macaroni and cheese consistency will just be a little thinner a little soupier some people prefer it like that that's not a problem but we want our macaroni and cheese to be nice thick ooey gooey and cheesy so we're using half and half and heavy whipping cream all right so guys once you get it all stirred nice and together and you can get like a little bubble on it you don't want too much boil because you don't want to burn this 
But once you get a little bit of bubble and once it gets hot, we are ready to go ahead and add our cheese. Now what you're going to do is put your fire on low or even turn it off. We're going to go ahead and add half of our cheese mixture that we had shredded up. Go ahead and put that in your sauce. And once you've done that, get to stirring. Put a little bit in at a time. Don't do the whole half at one time. While it's melting, go ahead and add a little bit more. But like I said, you want to reserve half of this mixture because we're going to use that to layer our macaroni and cheese. So once you get your mixture halfway done, stir it in. And now you definitely can take, if it was on simmer, you can go ahead and take it off of the fire or turn your fire off and just go ahead and slowly melt in the cheese. It'll melt in very easily at this point so this is what you want your cheese mixture to look like a kind of soupy pancake batter if you can imagine that so that's what it looks like it's a it's almost just like pancake batter so but it's still it's nice and ooey gooey and cheesy all right guys so simultaneously we're getting our salted boiling water together so we can boil our noodles, we are going to boil our uh, elbow macaroni noodles for seven to eight minutes al dente. You want your noodles to be firm, not too soft, so don't boil them. Do not overcook your noodles. That will be a mistake. You only want to cook your noodles for about seven minutes. So like I said, that is salted boiling water, and we're going to go ahead and we're going to cook those for seven to eight minutes. All right, now that we have drained our macaroni, we're going to go ahead and pour the whole box into our bowl. Excuse me for the steam. and move that away. All right, let's put it back. Now we're going to add a half a stick of butter into our macaroni. That's going to keep our macaroni from sticking. I think I put in a little bit more than a half of butter because we like butter. And, you know, can't go wrong with a little bit of butter. So we're going to go ahead and put that in and give it a nice good mix and let that melt on into our macaroni and then we're going to get started with the rest of our ingredients. All right, this next ingredient is the star of our show and you'll be like, it can't be the star of the show. The cheese is the star of the show. No, sour cream is the star of macaroni and cheese's show. That sour cream, I'm going to put a half a cup in is going to make your macaroni and cheese pop. Baby, just trust me. Just trust me. It is the sour cream. It's not the cheese. You can use any cheese you want in macaroni and cheese. But you got to have that sour cream. It's going to give your macaroni and cheese this taste that... Yeah, just trust me and do what I say. Do what I say. Once you have mixed up your macaroni with your sour cream and butter... You are ready to go ahead and pour all of it into your cheese mixture. Make sure you go ahead and pour all of it in. We're going to do half at a time. So pour in half and then we'll stir it up and then we'll be ready to stir in the other half of our mixture. Once we get it all stirred up, we are ready for our seasonings. We are going in with some ground white pepper. I just prefer using white. Um, I used to use black pepper back in the day, but white is just uh, aesthetically pleasing, more pleasing than the black. So I'm going to go ahead and put like a teaspoon and a half of the white pepper. Then I'm going to go in with maybe a tablespoon to taste, guys, of my adobo seasoned salt. Love this as my seasoned salt. Then I'm going to go ahead and give that a good stir. And guys, I'm old school. A little salt and a little pepper is all I need. I'm not putting no paprika. I'm not putting no complete. I'm just using my adobo seasoned salt and my pepper. And trust me, my taste is off of the chain. So that's all I'm going to use. I'm ready to go ahead and transfer this into my bowl. Or should I say my baking dish. Make sure you butter your baking dish, the bottom and the side, so that your uh, macaroni and cheese will not stick. And now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and spoon in half of our mixture. Once that's spooned in, I'm going to go ahead and layer that with half of the cheese that is left on top of that in the middle layer. Then after that, I'm going to go ahead and spend, uh, 
spin. I'm going to go ahead and spread the rest of my mixture on top of that. Making sure that I get it all nice and even. And then once I have spread the rest of the mixture on top, I will use the rest of my shredded cheese and place it on top of that. And as you see, once we get to the end, mama don't play no games because if y'all haven't noticed, cheese is not cheap. I am going to use my fingers and I'm going to scrape the rest out of that dang on bowl. I'm going to get every piece of cheese. All right, guys, I baked this in the oven for 375 for 45 minutes. I'm not going to lie. I robbed y'all of the money shot. As y'all saw, I had about four macaroni and cheeses that I baked for my clients in the oven. And I forgot to get the money shot. But as you see, here we are, bubbling macaroni, brown macaroni and cheese. That's my ham. We ain't going to worry about that. But trust me, when people taste my macaroni and cheese, they say, where is your uncle's sister? Because I'm about to slap her. Yes, it's that good. All right, guys, I want to thank you for watching. Go ahead, hit that subscribe button for me. Give me a big thumbs up. Once again, you're not getting that corner piece. It's mine. Hit that notification bell so you can be alerted when I do post another video. Hope to see you guys in past, present, and future videos. Love you guys. Bye.